Hi guys, I just thought I would do a quick video based on being a newbie to lasers, four newbies to lasers. I know when you get a laser, I know when I got my laser, I was really keen to make stuff and I was flat out downloading things off other websites that were already pre-made, that had been made by other people and designed by other people. And I really had no idea how to make my own stuff, which was where I really wanted to go with it. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was to be able to make my own box tabs. I didn't understand how to make box tabs at all, and it might seem really simple <clears throat> to some, but to me it didn't. And I'm assuming to a lot of others it probably doesn't either. So I'm going to do a really short, hopefully, quick video on how to make box tabs. And if it goes all right, I might make one later on on how to make your own box. But we start off with the box tabs. I'm going to put myself to the background and hide. <clears throat> and to start off with, you simply need to be, and this is in light burn, obviously, and so you need to just draw a box. So using the box tool up the top here on the left-hand side, draw a box. It doesn't really matter what width it is, but I'm going to make it uniform by using the adjusting sizes up here. I'll make it just, make it 100 mil all the way around, doesn't really matter for this this purpose. And I'm just going to drag it over here so it's a nice, nice and centered. And then I'm going to make another box. Actually, I might just turn my cuts layers to output so it's a bit darker. There we go, we can see it. And I'm going to make another box exactly the same size beside it, but a rectangular one. So make that 100 long and say, 50 wide, it doesn't really matter for this task. So now I've got two boxes exactly the same length, and this will be one that is, this will be the base of the box. If I was going to make a box, this would be the base, and this would be one of the sides that's going to go on it. Now all we're going to do today is make tabs that will join this surface and this surface together. And you can experiment from there. I'm hoping that will give you enough information to be able to experiment. And we'll go from there. So this is the part that really confused me. And I didn't understand. It seemed like it was a big mystery. So let's go with what we need to do to start off with. So to start off with, we go back to our box tool up here on the left. We grab it and we draw a box <coughs> that... For this point, I've just drawn it random, but the height of the box will be determined by the thickness of your material. So if you're using three mil thickness ply or MDF or whatever you're using, you'll set the height of that box to be three mil. And I usually make mine 15 millimeters wide. Now, if you're using imperial measurements, I'm not sure what they are. I think three mil is about one eighth, and 15 mil is probably around or five eighths of an inch, I'm not sure, um, thereabouts, it could be a bit less. So we make one tab, which we've got right here, and this is our first tab, and I'm going to drag it down here to the side of my box, and I'm going to drag it in. I might just blow this up a little bit so we can see it a bit easier, and you can see here I've got one tab, and I'm moving it in from the edge. So what we need to do now is create more tabs that are going to go along the side of this box and will also be used on the box above it or the tab above it. So we're going to use the array tool. The easiest way I've found is, is this one and that is to use the array tool. So I'm going to click the array tool and as you can see here it comes up and it says the total width of my tab is 15 millimeters and it says a spacing of two mil, which we don't want. I'm going to set the spacing to be about 30, and you'll see why in a second. And we can adjust this as well. So at the moment, we've got one X value here. So one X, so this is this one. Now, if I click one more, you'll see another one appears. And you can see that I don't really have enough room for a third one. So to adjust that, I'm just going to change my width or my distance apart down so that I can fit three along there. 
it doesn't really matter it's up to you you could make one big tab that goes here and another big tab that goes there I'm going to go with three tabs so that's all I need to do there and I've created three tabs so for the next step to do this I actually need to group these three items together if I don't group them together it gets messy so make sure you select all three items and hit the group function up the top which is this one here the three little people and we've done that so we've got our tab here and as you can see when I move the mouse over that center box the docking icon comes up the little circle with the lines on it and I can just dock it to the edge by dragging it down docking it to the edge of my box and that's all good it's docked but I don't know if it's centered and I need it to be centered otherwise I could have off sided boxes but before I do that I also want to make a copy of these because I'm going to use these exact ones up here so I've selected them all and I'm going to go control C and then control V to paste a new set I'm just going to drag them up here out of the way for now and go back down to this one so I've got my three down here they're grouped and they're tagged to the edge or docked to the edge of this box so holding down the control for me on a Mac or on a Mac it's holding down command on a Mac because that's what I'm working on um, but also control on a PC so I'm holding down command on the Mac and selecting all of the boxes and I'm going up here to my my align tool which is this one and I'm going to align it to the vertical center which is to do that now you can see nothing happened it didn't look like anything happened because obviously I had it pretty close to center as it was so therefore I've got these three docked these tabs docked they're in the center of this box and now what I need to do is actually weld them together so I'm going to select them again like so and then I'm going to go over to my world function over here and I've now created my first three tabs now I would then go up to my top one and as you can see here if I put these on the outside of this piece here they're going to butt against each other and I don't want that so I actually need these tabs to be able to slot into those tabs so I'm going to move them up inside my top shape and I'm going to move as you can see the docking tool just came up again a little docking icon as I'm mousing over I'm going to drag it down and dock it to the edge of this shape here I'm now going to select the other shape as well by holding command down and clicking the outside so now they're all ticked away and they look like little dancing ants going around the edge and I'm going to vertically align these as well and you can see that that did change the position of it when I did it so now I've docked these to these three here to the inside and you'll see why in a second so not the outside if I dock them to the inside what I'll do now is select everything again so it's all moving and then go to my world tool again and as you can see I've now got three tabs on the inside and what I've essentially done is created one wall of a box now I would continue to see how this fits together I can just drag this down like so and if we look in nice and close you can see that everything fits nice and fine so that is how it would go if I was going to put it together as a box it just comes down and it snaps together nicely and in case you're not sure of what I just did then when you move the mouse over the corner of a shape you can see that it's got the crosshairs that come up so that is what it wants to do is dock it dock it to the corner so I'm over the corner of a shape and what I can do is click on that and drag it down Oops click it down and drag and dock it to another corner so if I click on the corner the crosshairs come up and it allows me to dock to another corner if I just go to there it just docks to a flat surface so I hope that helps 
But what we would do then is we would, um, because I copied those shapes earlier on, I would then put them down the side here and I would rotate them. And if you're not sure what I just did then, I rotated them. You can go up to here, up to the, I think it's the tools or the edit. Here we go. Tools, arrange. There it is. So we could arrange it. But it is also, the shortcut for that is the full stop on your keyboard. So you can just press the full stop and it rotates it 90 degrees. So I would keep doing that all the way around my box. I would drag them in and dock them again. And I would center them by selecting them all, which I just held the command key down and selected the box as well, or control on the PC. It would be different this time. I don't use the vertical. Vertical is going this way. Actually, up and down. I don't know how that works. But anyway, I would align them horizontally, and you can see that it just shifted that side. So you'll use the align vertical center when you're trying to align them along this line, and the horizontal center when you're trying to align along this line, as I just did here. And it centered everything. And now what I would do is go over here again and weld the two together. And as you can see, I'm starting to get the base of my box. Now, you would need to then put tabs up the side of here and here and to start thinking things through in that respect. But in essence, this video was just about creating box tabs in Lightburn. So I hope that helps some of you who are struggling with making box tabs or are mystified by box tabs. It's really quite simple and now it comes down to experimenting with the different things you can do with box tabs and um, making your own boxes. So you could just go about making a very basic square box, cut it out and, and see how you go. But that is um, how we make box tabs in Lightburn.